Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for section 10.2, Products of Power Properties. Our essential question is, how can inductive reasoning be used to observe patterns and write general rules involving properties of exponents? Today, you will need your Jaguar jots on section 10.2, a pen or a pencil. You might find a highlighter helpful. A calculator might be helpful for using some calculations your bright ideas, your creativity, and always bring your problem-solving skills. We are going to begin by looking at product of powers on a table and look at some patterns. If you recall, our base is the larger number and our exponent tells us how many times we are multiplying out our base. So here we can see we're going to multiply out our base four times and we're going to multiply out the same base two times. So let's go ahead and write that. And when we write that, we can see we have four twos and we have two twos. So why not just put those two exponents together because we know that we have a total of one, two, three, four, and then another one, two, so four and two. And so we could say we have a total of six twos. So instead of writing them all out, we could just say we have two to the sixth. We could do that same idea here. We could say we have the base of negative three twice, and we have the base of negative three five additional times, and so we could write that out. And so we know we have the base of three, two, and another five, so we could say two plus five, or we could just say it's negative three to the seventh power. And we're already developing a pattern here where instead of having to go through this, let's write it out that many times to figure out that we can just add it, why don't we just add it? So we have the base 5.1 and the base 5.1, and instead of writing it out 12 times and 20 times, why don't we just add those? Because that's all we've been doing here. And so I don't need to write it out, I can just add it. So I could just say 5.1 to the 12 plus 20, which then would be, 5.1 to the 32nd power. So what our rule is saying is if I am multiplying two exponents with the exact same base, I can just take the exponents and I can add them. So this is our rule. If it looks like this, the bases are the same and they're being multiplied, then I can add the exponents. This is called the product of powers. So here we have power of powers, and this one's a little bit different because what we're doing is we're going to raise our power to another power. So if we were looking at this one, which is three squared to the third power, what we're going to do is we're going to write out our third squared, three squared, that's our new base. So we're going to write it out three times. So our base is three squared, one, two, three, written out three times. So how can we change that? Well, now if we go back to what we just used, that means I can do two plus two plus two. But what is repeated addition but multiplication? So let's change this into a multiplication problem and call it two times three. Well, then if I look back here, look at that. We have two times three because when, when numbers are next to parentheses, they just mean multiply. So really, when we're taking a power of a power right here, we can just multiply our powers together. So when they're next to each other with parentheses, we can just multiply them together. So really what we have is three to the six. If I wanted to write this all out, we would have actually seen three sixes because there's two here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six threes in this problem. So let's look at the next one, two squared to the fourth power. So our new base right here is two squared. So we're gonna write that out four times. And so here we have that written out four times, one, two, three, four. So then that means I have one, two, two plus two plus two plus two plus two, and I'm talking about the exponent of two here. But repeated addition is multiplication. So I'm gonna rewrite this as a multiplication problem as two times four. But look, right here, when numbers are next to parentheses, it means multiply. So right here, I have two times four. So rather than doing all of this right here, I can just look at that when I'm doing the problems. I just circle them to help myself remember that that's what I'm doing. 
And so I would have two times four, which is eight. So now if I'm looking at this one right here, I have seven to the third, two times. So this is seven to the third times seven to the third or seven to the three plus three, because going back to my old rule that we just learned, I could just add those, but three plus three is really three times two or three times two, which is what I saw right there, which then is seven to the sixth right? Because there's three sevens in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six sevens in this problem. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to take a pause and tell me what is the power of five to the 10th to the seventh power. And that's how we read this five to the 10th to the seventh power. And I'd like you to tell me the final answer. Okay, so if I was to write that out, that was five to the 10th, 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 five to the 10th. So each of this, these parentheses have 10 fives in there and there's seven of them. So I could go 10 plus 10 plus 10, I could do that seven times. Or I could go to our rule, which we're developing, which is 10 times seven. So I could just circle those and go 10 times seven, which is 70. So we are well on our way to developing this nice rule. So instead of writing these all out, let's just do the rule instead of repeated multiplication. So I can just take this, that right there means I'm going to multiply those two numbers together, right? They're next to a parentheses, numbers next to a parentheses mean multiply. So my answer is y to the three times four and three times four is y to the 12th. Go ahead and do that very last one, x to the eighth to the 11th power. Good, you should have done x to the eighth times 11 and you should have gotten x to the 88th. And that's why we wanna know how to do these is so when we get these big problems, we're not having to write it out 88 times. I don't wanna write it out 88 times. So what is the rule? The rule is saying when I have something that looks like this, the base being raised to a power, and then you put it in parentheses and you raise it to another power, we are going to get the base and you multiply the two powers together. So what happens if we change it just a tad bit? And instead of having just one base, what if there's two bases or a product in the parentheses like this. Well, it's almost like the distributive property, but for exponents. What it's saying is, don't forget about me. I'm also being raised to the power as well. So what it's saying is take everything and take it to the third power. So this is two times three times two times three times two times three. The entire thing had to be raised to the third power. So I have a two to the third and a three to the third. That's all it's saying. It's like distributed property, but for exponents. So for the next one, this is just saying that you needed to take your six to the A and do it four times because everything is being raised to the fourth power. So how many sixes do we have? We have one, two, three, four of those sixes. So it'd be six to the fourth. And we also have four A's. So it'd be A to the fourth. I want you to try the next one and then come on back. So that was x, y to the seventh power or the product of x, y to the seventh power. And so you have x, y written out seven times. So that'd be x to the seventh and y to the seventh. So, so far it just doesn't really do a good job of illustrating what's happening, but this next one really is gonna do a great job of illustrating what's happening. This is saying the product of x squared y to the third power. So we're going to write out x squared y three different times. So really, how many x's do we have? Well, remember that you're going to add that 2 plus 2 plus 2. Or you're going to multiply your 2 times 3. I like that idea of multiplying better because when I have big numbers, then it's going to be easier. So what I do as I go two times three, which is six, 
it's exactly what I'm going to get if I add up all these twos. If I go two plus two plus two, I get the exact same answer. But I like that better because what if that outside number had been something horrific like 15? I don't want to have to write it out that many times. And there's a one right here. So one times three. So our final answer is x to the sixth y cubed. So what the rule is saying is that if you have numbers in parentheses, if you have something in parentheses and you're raising it to a power, everything in that parentheses is raised to that same power. So we learned a whole bunch about products. Let's do some practice problems. We're going to keep these as powers because we want to make sure you understand what things look like as a power. And so we're just going to do the problems. So if I have six squared times six to the seventh, what do I do with those exponents? I add them. Two plus seven is nine. So this is six to the ninth. If I have eight third to the seventh power, remember when the parentheses there, parentheses, numbers next to parentheses multiply. So I'm going to do x to the three times seven and three times seven is 21. So this is x to the 21. And then the last one is a great example of what happens when I have numbers being raised to a power or a product being raised to a power. So the four is being raised to the ninth and the x cubed is being raised to the ninth. So there was a one right here with the four. So this is four to the one and x to the third. So four to the one times nine and x to the three times nine. So then I have four to the ninth and x to the 27th. I'd like you guys to try these three and then we're going to come back and do them all together. All right, now that you tried them, let's go through these. So that's the product of w squared times t to the fourth power. So both of those get raised to the fourth power. So w to the two times four and t to the one times four. I always do that one times just so I don't lose it. So it ends up being w to the eighth and t to the fourth. On this next one, our base is a negative two. Now that's negative two to the first. You might forget it. So you might want, want to just put a one in there. If you forget that that's a one, it's okay to just put a one right there to help you remember. There's nothing wrong with doing that. So we have negative two to the one plus five, and then that's negative two to the six. And again, on this last one, when you have those two numbers right next to each other like that, go ahead and circle them. Circling them helps you remember, hey, those are going to get multiplied. The other thing that helps you remember is remember when two numbers are next to a parenthesis, they multiply. So we have y to the six squared. And so those are going to multiply so that you end up with y to the six times two. And then that's y to the 12th. So what happens when you have funny questions like this, where you're like, whoa, that's a fraction and we have a decimal and oh my goodness, the rules are still the same. Our base on this one is just three fifths. It's three fifths squared times three fifths to the ninth. And it's not asking us to evaluate it. It's just saying, write it as a power. And so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add the two and the nine. Our base just happens to be three fifths. So two plus nine is 11. So we have three fifths to the 11th power. And on this next one, we just happen to have three things inside our parentheses. We have a 0 0.5, an M and an N, and they're all being squared. So it's 0 0.5 to the first power, M to the first power and N to the first power. And they're all being multiplied by that power of two. So everything is being squared. So you have 0 0.5 squared, m squared, and n squared. Now there's some more problems left in your Jaguar dots that we'll do in class, but you just have to remember to follow those rules. Make sure you keep those rules handy because they're definitely rules that you need to practice. And the only way to get better at these is to practice them. So make sure you keep those rules handy because the only way to get better at these is to practice them. We'll definitely be doing lots of problems so that we can get better at them. And they're just a puzzle. Once we figure out the key to the puzzle, you just continue to work with it and then you get better at it. What I'd like you to do is to explain to someone the difference between six squared, 
times six to the fourth and six squared to the fourth power. Thank you so much for joining us and I can't wait to do our next lesson on exponents. Remember, be kind to one another because we could all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.